Thank you, Dr. Abdullah, for this nice presentation. And thank you for inviting me to be a part of this great conference. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'na. Wa anfa'na bima alamtana wa zidna alma. We will talk about the shock. It's only a reminder. Those are the objectives, the definition, stages of shock, the compensatory mechanisms, which are very exaggerated and powerful in the children, the clinical presentation, diagnosis, differential diagnosis, and finally, the management. <clears throat> Simply, the shock is a status when the oxygen delivery and the nutrients delivery to the tissues is less than needed. Simple. If you don't treat, it will lead to metabolic acidosis and organ failure, even death. So early recognition is very, very important. Now, oxygen delivery simply it is the cardiac output times the arterial oxygenation content, while the cardiac output is the stroke volume times the heart rate. Arterial oxygen content is the oxygen con contained in the RBCs and in the plasma. What are the stages of the shock? The compensated one. Here, the vital organs still maintain good function. Blood pressure is okay, but it is a compensated. Here, you need to, high, to have a high index of suspicion to pick it and to start. Otherwise, it will go to uncompensated when the microcirculation and the perfusion will be affected. And your patient will show you a hypotension. So there is a, a problem in the perfusion. If you don't treat, he will go in the third stage which is the irreversible, where the problems already happened. In the kids, there are a, a lot of compensatory mechanisms which are more powerful than ours. Baroreceptor, you know that we, they are located in the aortic arch and in the cartilage sinus. It is simply, they are stimulated by high MAP. If the MAP is high, blood pressure will be low, vasodilatation, okay, and cardiac output will be low. If you remove this stimulation by low MAP, so inverse, you will have vasoconstriction, increase in the heart rate, increase in the blood pressure, and increase ultimately in the cardiac output as well. The chemoreceptor usually responds to acidosis and results in tachypnea and vasoconstriction. If the blood to the kidneys is less, so the renin will be secreted. It will be converted to the angiotensin 2, which leading to vasoconstriction and aldosterone re release. The aldosterone will lead to sodium and water absorption. The catecholamines as well respond to acidosis and to hypotension and will increase the contractility and will end of vasoconstriction. Autoperfusion is the reabsorption of the interstitial fluid. So, Early diagnosis is very important. We have to have a high index of suspicion. Every patient has shock under proven otherwise. The diagnosis is simply by history and by physical examination. Don't forget that in children, the hypotension is a late and morbid sign, unlike the adults. So, if I suspect my patient is in shock, my history needs to be focused. Ask about a heart disease, surgery, steroid use, medical problems. Brief history regarding the exposure and the onset of the problem. Now you focus on examining the patient. You start always with vital signs. Okay, take your vital signs. Neurologically, you look if there is fluctuation of level of consciousness, if there is seizures, if there is bulging anterior fontanelle. The skin here is very important. Look if the cool, if it is cool, it is uh, uh, cold, the cyanotech, there is poor perfusion, there is poor pulses. Cardiopulmonary, there will be hyperapnea, tachypnea, tachycardia, pulses will be weak. Renal-wise, scant urine amount, maybe oligouria or even anuria. Now the differential diagnosis of shock, this is for academic reasons, okay, because shock is shock, but here, unlike the pulse, we put more than one type of shock. The hypovolemic, it is the most common cause of shock all over the world in all ages, okay? If it is due to trauma, so it is the hemorrhagic one. It can be due to loss of plasma or serum, okay? Such as in burns, it can be caused by drugs. The distributive one, unlike the hypovolemic where my fluid went out of my body, here my fluid still in my body, but it went outside the vessels. It is in the inter 
stitial space, in the third space, such as in anaphylaxis, neurologic shock, septic shock. The cardiogenic shock can be due to the heart itself, can be due to the arrhythmias or congenital heart disease, which are ductal dependent. The obstructive one, believe me, it is the nightmare. Nightmare of the doctor, nightmare of the patient as well, such as pneumothorax, tamponade, dissection of the aorta, diaphragmatic rupture. You need to diagnose early and to intervene early, otherwise you will lose your patient. The dissociative shock here, the hemoglobin is not containing oxygen. And the amount of oxygen which it's containing, it is not delivering it to the tissue. So the hemoglobin will become stingy, not delivering oxygen. So the perfusion in such case is not affected, but there is hypoxemia as well. Such as in CO poisoning, cyanide poisoning, methemoglobinemia, dishemoglobinemia. So if my patient is in shock, I need to act. Precise etiology, I will defer it a little bit, okay? Almost all the time there is hypovolemia, even in the cardiogenic shock, because if he, you are in shock, you will not eat. So there is a relative or absolute hypovolemia. So if you do an X-ray, look at the heart size. It is oligemic or generous. It can guide you how much fluid to give. Now, if my patient is in unit, I will add to my differential the following. Congenital adrenal hyperplasia, inborn error of metabolism, obstructive left, left side heart, uh, cardiac lesion, such as aortic stenosis, hypoplastic left heart syndrome, coarctation of aorta, interrupted aortic arch, and the cardiologist, please forgive me if I forget something else. Who says that who is ugly? Management, what are the goal of treatment, of management and treating a patient with shock? So I need to give him oxygen. Always start with 100% oxygen. Fluid, cautious, just, judicious, fluid replacement. Control the temperature. Hypothermia is as bad as hyperthermia. Antibiotic when it is needed. Almost always there is a metabolic problem. So correct it. And the use of inotropes. CAB, if your patient is unresponsive, you start with CAB. If he is responsive, ABC remain ABC. So maintain the airway. If he cannot maintain it, help him. If he cannot tolerate and to keep it open, open it and intubate your patient. Keep the airway open. Breathing, is he can breathe, you give him oxygen 100%. If not, you intubate, you ventilate. You give him proper oxygenation. Now circulation. The rule of 60, within 60 seconds, you have to have a line. Peripheral line, IV line, or if you can't, put an intraosseous line. It will take only five seconds. And you can start giving anything can be given with a, via the IV line, can be given with the intraosseous. You need to monitor frequently your patient. Lab studies, you don't need too, too much labs, but CBC, ABGs, blood sugar is important, electrolytes, coagulation profile, because the acidosis affects the coagulation. Type and cross if there is history of trauma and you need to give blood products and culture if, if, it, is, uh, if it is recommended. Now, we need to optimize the preload. You cannot go to Abu Dhabi without filling the tank with benzene, so fill the tank. Usually we give 20 ml per kg per dose within two to 10 minutes, can be repeated once, twice, three times. Maximum over 30, over 60 minutes, you need to give 60 ml per kg. And after this, you need to reassess your patient, mentally, urine output, perfusion wise, and so on. If he is not improving, you need to introduce the ionotropes. So it is another rule of 60, after 60 minutes, you reassess your patient, okay? X-ray is very important to show you the cardiac solute. If you don't have normal saline, you can give ringer lactate. In the birth, the second hour, you can give ringer lactate. But we prefer to give normal saline and attention to the glucose. Any patient with fluctuating level of consciousness, we need to know how much is blood sugar. Further examination, further management, depends on the results I will get from the ultrasound, from the blood gases, from the CVB monitoring, from the X-ray, from the ultrasound, and so on. So cardiotonics, prior to start it, we need to know what is the goal, what shall we monitor while we are treating, and what is my end point while using the ionotropes. The epinephrine or the adrenaline, 
the dose is from 0 0.05 to 1.5 micrograms per kg per minute. Sometimes you go up even to 3. It will increase my heart rate, my systemic vascular resistance, and my contractility. My endpoint is adequate blood pressure and acceptable tachycardia. The norepinephrine is much more potent vasoconstrictor. The dose is similar with epinephrine. It will increase the systemic vascular resistance. And my endpoint is adequate blood pressure. The dopamine is 2 to 20 mass per kg per minute, increase the heart rate and the systemic vascular resistance. My end point is to improve the perfusion, blood pressure, and urine output. The dobutamine is cardiotonic, the dose is 1 to 20 mix per kg per minute. It will increase the contractility and it will reduce the systemic vascular and peripheral vascular resistance. That's why if you give it attention to the blood pressure, you might need to increase your epinephrine or norepinephrine. My end point is to improve the perfusion but attention to the blood pressure. Prostaglandin, if the patient is a newborn, the dose is from 0.05 to 0.1 mic per kg per minute. It will maintain the potency of the ductus arteriosus. Most common cause of shock all over the world is the hypovolemic one. So I have decrease in the circulating blood volume, so decrease in the preload, so decrease in the stroke volume, so decrease in the cardiac output. Etiology, renal waste, GI waste, hemorrhage, fluid loss, capillary syndrome. History is important, gastroenteritis or diarrhea, uh, vomiting, polyuria. <clears throat> signs, look for signs of dehydration. Anterior full tunnel will be sunken, absent tears, dry lips, dry tongue, dry membrane, weak pulses, hypotension, tachycardia, tachypnea, and sometimes congestive heart failure. It can be a cause. Now, if it is hypovolemic and there is trauma, so it is hemorrhagic. So the most common cause is trauma in the hemorrhagic. This trauma can be evident or in child abuse can be concealed. So look for sites of bleeding, such as in the liver, spleen, intracranial GI. So don't be misled by the history, because sometimes in child abuse the history will be misleading. Here, your patient will be pale, will be tachypnic, and will be hypotensive as well. Therapy. Always start with ABC if your patient is not unconscious. So we need to replace. Start with crystalloid, what you have, and you need to give blood products as early as. If you don't have, give uncross-matched blood. Usually for kids, male or female, we give only negative uncross-matched blood, okay. as soon as possible. But with the first blood draw, you need to take type and cross. It is very important to consider the ongoing losses and to be replaced as well, because the patient maybe is losing further and further, and you don't replace, he will go in shock, and you cannot control his situation. And if you have an idea what is the underlying cause, you need to focus on treating the underlying cause. Now, in the septic shock here, it is another story. We have two types of shock, totally different, okay? We have the early one, the warm shock. This one is something special, specific. It is early. It is compensated. In this stage, hyperdynamic status will be there. So the perfusion will be good, even exaggerated. So if you look at the cap refilling, will be brisk, less than one second. And good perfusion, extremities are hot, are warm. But he will be tachycardic, tachypneic. If you do a blood gas, you will see metabolic acidosis. If you have a patient with unexplained metabolic acidosis, think about warm shock. History is also very important. Maybe your patient has chemotherapy receiving, or he is immune compromised, or there is a signs of sepsis. Okay. White pulse pressure is very important and very really diagnostic. In, in such case, you take the pressure and see the difference between. The, the systolic and the diastolic. The cardiac output here will be increased because of the tachycardia. If you do mixed venous saturation, it will be high as well. But the systemic vascular resistance will, will be decreased. Here, attention to the, to the biochemicals. He is hypocarbic, so he's eliminating in CO2. Okay? Lactate is high, but he is hyperglycemic. Unlike the cold septic shock where hypoglycemia is there. Okay? In the septic shock, the cold one, here it is versa verse. It is a late one. It is uncompensated. There is drop in the cardiac output. Clinically, you will find cyanosis, cold extremities, rapid 3D pulse, and slow respirations. 
Here, the mixed venous saturation will be decreased. Cardiac output as well, CVB as well. Systemic vascular resistance, the vascular resistant peripheral one and systemic will, will be highly increased, okay? Because of the acidosis, also thrombocytopenia, oligouria or anuria, myocardial expansion as well, because it reacts according to the lactic acidosis. Also, you might have capillary leak. Biochemical abnormalities, here there is metabolic acidosis, evidently, there is hypoxia, coagulopathy, and hypoglycemia, unlike the woman where the blood pressure was high because it's, he is in stress. If you don't treat rapidly, it will progress to multi-organ system failure, even death. Any system involved will increase your mortality by 10%, so attention to this. Therapy, start with ABCs, give fluids, give inotropes, and appropriate antibiotics, and treat the underlying cause. What are the red flags? Fever more than 38.3 for patients three months of age and older, or more than 38 in infants less than three months. Hypothermia, tachypnea, abnormal pulse, abnormal cap refilling, more than three or less than one, hypotension, abnormal or fluctuating of the mental status, irritability, inappropriate crying, inappropriate drowsiness, not interfering, not interacting with the car uh, caregivers, difficult to arouse, confusions, purpura anyway, anywhere on the body or petechia below the nebel line, macular erythema with mucosal change, strawberry time, conjunctival injection, which is suggested for toxic shock syndrome. Here are signs of infection, abscess, or ecchymosis. In the cardiogenic shock, as we said, it can be due to dysrhythmia, infection, metabolic, obstruction, drug intoxication, congestive heart failure, trauma. Now, how we differentiate? It is the history. History is very important. Examination, look at the size of, liver, of the liver. If you hear gallop, the gallop itself alone, it is a diagnostic for heart failure. Murmurs you can hear, and rails, especially in the low parts of the lungs. X-ray will show you large heart, pulmonary venous congestion, and echocardiography is a must in, in such case. And here, attention, when you are giving IV fluids, usually you give five and see another five per kg and see again. How we manage cardiac failure? We need to improve the cardiac output. You are riding a horse, it is tired, you rest the horse, okay? So, if there is arrhythmia, you need to correct it. Optimize the preload, fill the tank. Improve the contractility by inotropes, and reduce the afterload. Also, you need to decrease the work of the heart. Maintain normal temperature, sedate the patient, intubate, and put him on the ventilator, and correct anemia if it is there. And in cardiac failure, we accept hemoglobin of 13 and above. In the distributive shock here, fluids went out from the vessels, but in the third space, not out of the body. And we know what are the causes. And there is peripheral pooling of the fluids and blood. Relatively, there is hypovolemia in such case as well. No other etiologies, anaphylaxis, drugs, neurology, sepsis. How we manage? We give fluids, we give anatropes, we give steroids, and we treat the underlying cause. Nightmare, remember, if you don't diagnose, you might lose your patient, okay? There is a mechanical obstruction to the ventricular outflow. Etiology, congenital heart disease, massive pulmonary impulsion, tensional, tension pneumothorax, cardiac tamponade, rupture diaphragm, all are top emergencies. So, here the cardiac output is not good, it's not adequate, in face of what? adequate preload and adequate contractility. Why is that? Because there is obstruction in the way. So, in case of tamponade, you look at the pulse pressure, it will be narrow, pulse pressure. And you might find also electromechanical dissociation. Here, in this case, we treat the underlying cause. Those are examples of pericardial effusion, of cardiac tamponade, pneumothorax, and rupture of the diaphragm. In the dissociative shock, perfusion is good. Oxygenation is not. Hemoglobin is stingy, is not giving the oxygen to the tissues. 
such as in carbon monoxide, methemoglobinemia, dyshemoglobinemia. If you don't have high index of suspicion, it is difficult to diagnose because what? Because the tissue perfusion is good. But if you do blood gases, you will see that there is hypoxemia. Okay. Early recognition and treatment of such cause is the main therapy of. So final thoughts. We need to recognize the compensated shock quickly, to have a high index of suspicion, to remember that tachycardia is a first sign, hypotension is a late and only a sign, gain IV access quickly, 60 seconds, if not use IO, enterosis, administer adequate amounts of fluid therapy, remember that you need to replace the ongoing losses, if there is electrolyte or glucose abnormalities, you need to correct it quickly, if the patient is not responding the way you think he should, broaden your differential diagnosis. And before I receive questions from you, I will ask you one question, or even two. Can the patient have two types of shock at the same time? The answer is yes. Can he have three times, three types of shock at the same time? Also, it is yes. He can have also the all types of shock. Imagine, hit by a car, he has pneumothorax, internal hemorrhage, cardiac contusion, and I gave him ampicillin, and he was have allergy to ampicillin. So you have all types of shock. So attention to this. So broaden your differential diagnosis. If your patient is, if, is not responding the way you expect him to do, think about the another differential of diagnosis. And thank you.